in the next few videos, we're going to start looking outside the boat at external factors affecting us when racing around the course. And today, we're going to be focusing on how factors affect the amount of wind across the course and how that should affect your strategy upwind. But before jumping straight into that, I want to outline what we mean by strategy and give that buzzword a bit of context. Your race strategy can be described as the fastest route you would sail around the course without the impact from any other boats. Imagine a time trial setup where all you're racing is the clock. It is useful to compare this against tactics as they are often connected. However, tactics is now the added layer of sailing against other boats. How do you sail a course that takes into account what they are doing and how they may affect you? So as I mentioned, we're going to look at how our strategy may be impacted by a few different factors affecting the wind across the course. The first one we're going to look at is a simple cloud formation. So if we were sat on the start line, looking upwind towards the top mark, and saw a large cloud feature with darker water all on the right hand side, this could be an example of a cumulus cloud down drafting more wind onto the right side of the course. In this situation, we can see that the blue boat sailing out towards that increase in pressure would have an increase in boat speed and would be able to get to the wind mark first when compared to the yellow boat. However, we need to remember that not all clouds initially bring this increase in pressure. We can use their presence as an indication of a potential gain, but we must verify this with the sea state change. The variation in wind strength across the course may not be as clear cut as that, and we may be sailing in a situation that will create large gusts and lulls across the race course. An offshore breeze or an inland venue with no drastic features on the shoreline will create this patchy condition where little pockets of increased breeze and gaps between them will roll down to the race course due to the land affecting their path. In this situation, keeping your eyes out the boat and sailing from gust to gust will help you get to the windward mark first, as shown here by the blue boat. However, we need to remember that the gusts are rolling down towards you as if they are on a travelator. This means that you need to look upwind for the next gust sailing towards that and not chasing the current gust all the way across the race course. However, the shoreline may not be as uniform as that and there may be a large feature that is creating a wind shadow on one side of the course. Here, a large headland is directly upwind of the windward mark, disturbing the wind on the left hand side of the course. Staying out of this wind shadow and sailing on the right hand side of the course will mean a higher average boat speed and getting to the windward mark faster. Again, this is shown by the blue boat. In this situation, we may also feel a change in the wind direction due to this headland. However, we're going to explore that as a part of our next video. So now we have identified a few factors that affect the wind strength across the course. I want to finish by touching on how we can process all of that information to create our first beat strategy or plan. The first step in this process is to try and identify these features. This can be done on the water as a part of a pre-start routine. However, with modern forecasting and Google Earth, pre-event information gathering and a little bit of thought helps highlight these features before we even get on the water. Often with more than one factor affecting the course we must be able to sort these into two or three main priorities. This helps us simplify things down into a clear plan for the first beat. This step can be tricky however it does become easier with experience and by following the later stages within this process. Now it comes down to the hard part of actually executing your planned strategy. All too often, sailors sail away from the gain feature that they had highlighted pre-start. This is normally due to poor decisions and tactical positioning made on the start line or just afterwards. We will address these in a tactics video later on in the series. Finally, it doesn't matter if you're first or last, but we must evaluate how well the plan worked. What actually happened? Was there another factor making a massive difference on the race course? 
These questions are vital to feedback into the decision making process for next time and ultimately provide you with more experience to help you sort and prioritise. We will be recapping this thinking framework in the next few videos as it's a great way to simplify a complex decision into a four step process. But also in the next video we'll be having a look at how the changes in wind direction will affect our strategy.